welcome to today's broadcast. It's been challenging. What a Monday morning. And by the glory of God, we are right now alive. I apologize for this uh, delay. We had some technical glitches this Monday morning. But thank God. The Bible says, you know, we overcome. Hallelujah. So we overcome us by the grace of God. Oh, praise the Lord. What a beautiful day and a day to be alive. Normally, you know what I'm going to say. <laughs> if you are alive, you already have a miracle. The greatest miracle that anyone can have is the gift of life, which God blesses us every day. We wake up to see another day. Glory be unto the Lord this morning. Welcome once again. And wherever you are joining us in the world, we appreciate you this morning. And we sincerely do apologize for the delay. Like I said, we had some technical glitches at the beginning, but now we are live. So come on with me this morning. This morning, we are going to talk about the subject that says, Beware of seducing spirits. Beware of seducing spirits. Uh, so... Now, this uh, particular topic is found, you know, is taken from the book of First Timothy chapter number 4, verse 1, which is going to be our Bible reading this morning. But before we, you know, get into that subject, let us look at the word again, seduce. I, I do know that, you know, when, whenever the word talk, we talk about the word seduce, we think of a man and a woman, if you're in the Bible, you think of Samson and Delilah, you know, you know, seducing Samson. Well, that's true. That's the, also the meaning of the word seduce. Now, the dictionary says it means to make someone feel attracted to you and want to have sex with you, often someone younger or less experienced. So but the word there is younger or the key word that I will take from that part of definition is less experience. But that's not the definition we're looking at this morning. The second one says to persuade or to cause someone to do something that they would not usually consider doing by being very attractive and difficult to refuse. I repeat that again. To persuade or to cause someone to do something that they would not usually consider doing by being very attractive and difficult to refuse. That's one defines the key word that we want to use today, which means seduce. So to persuade someone or cause someone to do something that they would not usually want to do or consider doing and by being so attractive and the word there is difficult i like that word difficult to refuse they are so attractive and so difficult to refuse that is the uh, dictionary definition of uh, uh, the word seduce but let's get into the bible right away come with me as we go into the Bible, the book of uh, First uh, Timothy chapter number 4, and we will be reading from verse 1 downwards. Walk with me and take up your Bible and let's read. I'm reading from the King James Version of the Scriptures. It says, uh, Paul is writing to Timothy, a young believer, perhaps a young pastor, and he says, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meat which God has created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believed and know the truth. For every creature of God is good and nothing to be refused, if it be received with thanksgiving. Verse 5. For it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. In verse 6 it says, If thou put the brethren in remembrance of these things, 
Thou shalt be a good minister of Jesus Christ, nourished up in the words of faith and of good doctrine whereunto thou hast attained. So Paul is writing to Timothy here and he emphasizes that if you will talk about and teach the saints about the menace or the havoc that seducing spirit can cause, he said you will be a good minister of the gospel. You know, you would, that, that would make you a good minister of the gospel. And that's one of the reasons I want to talk about is remember that what we are looking at this day is the strategy on how to get out there and succeed after the coronavirus pandemic or which is still, let me say, I said the word after, or during this pandemic as the doors uh, begins to open in nations and companies try to resume economies, try to get back in it. it you know, people just get tired and they're trying to get back to normalcy. Well, the, the, there is still a lot that is out there and you need to have some kind of strategy to be able to navigate this unusual season. And that's what we've been looking at. And this morning, our focus uh, is on the topic that says, beware of seducing spirit. And Paul is writing to Timothy, say, now in the later times, which are the times that we're living in, everyone theologically will believe and say that we are living in the last days. In the last days, he says, some shall depart from the faith. Hallelujah. They will depart from the faith because of the activity of seducing spirit. Seducing spirit. The Bible says that's that's why so many, so many people would depart from the faith because of the activity, the increase of these, the increase of the activities of seducing spirit. They will seduce many and they will bring doctrines of devils, strange doctrines. They will be speaking lies in hypocrisy. I like that. You see, speaking lies in hypocrisy makes it look like a, speaking is, in other words, you would say that speaking lies in such a way as if it was the truth and make people to believe that is the truth. That is speaking lies in hypocrisy. And he says they will have so many other things going on. So now let's get into this subject, seducing spirit. What are seducing spirit? Seducing spirit to me, I would just be, you know, uh, try to enumerate and talk about, you know, this, their activity. Now, in my, in my, in my, you know, uh, notes, I, I write things now and I, I'm trying to share that with you this morning. Now, the first thing I notice about uh, seducing spirit is that the Bible says it will attack your faith. Some shall, it will attack your faith or your belief system. Uh, it will attack your belief system. You know, the things that you normally believe, the things that you had believed before, you may not believe them again that it is like that. And, and the seducing spirit, you know, is first deployed in the book of Genesis. To my, my understanding, I believe that seducing spirit is one of the most powerful weapons in the satanic arsenal. Because, you know, the way the seducing spirit works, you know, is different from other, you know, contingency of demonic spirits in the satanic arsenal. Uh, some uh, spirit will confront, some spirit will fight, some spirit will oppress, but seducing spirit does not come in any of those forms. Seducing spirit has only one target, it's not your health, though the effect of it may affect your health, it's not your finances, though after some time the effect of their activity will affect your finances, they will not directly target your finances, they will not directly target your health. They may not directly target your marriage, your business, the economy. But after a while, the effect of their activity will definitely touch every part of your life. Now, for us to be able to understand how you know dangerous this you know contingency or you know spirits or or demonic spirits in the satanic arsenal are we need to get back to the first time it has been de deployed in the bible by the enemy itself now let's get back to the book of genesis uh, i love the book of genesis because when you want to understand 
what's going on uh, Genesis tells you all you know almost all Genesis chapter number three let's get back to verse, verse one this is the first time that the seducing spirit have been deployed and watch this now let's take it together I'm gonna to try to analyze it you know I like bringing the scriptures you know practically in our present day terms but let's get the gist from Genesis and then we we practicalize it and so the Bible says here now it says now the serpent was a more subtle cover at the word subtle we're gonna look at intensively at that word the word subtle than any base of the field which the Lord God had made and he said unto the woman yea had God said ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden and the woman said unto the serpent, uh, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. In verse 3, But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. And the serpent said unto the woman, You shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof then your eyes shall be open and you shall be as gods knowing good and evil and when the woman saw notice that i want you to uh, let me emphasize that and when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be desired to make one wise she took of the fruit thereof and did it and gave also unto her husband with her and he did it seven and the eyes of them both were opened and they knew that they were naked and so thick leaves together and make themselves aprons now let, let me let me stop there let me stop there this is already too much oh come let's practicalize it let's put it in the today's context so the bible says that the serpent was the most subtle uh, the word subtle uh, means uh, especially of a change or distinction so delicate and precise as to be difficult to analyze uh, or describe. Let me come again with that. The word subtle means something that is especially of a change or distinction, change and distinction that is so delicate and so precise notice the word delicate and so precise as to be difficult to analyze or describe so is a change that take place is so del is a delicate change but is yet is so precise and is difficult to analyze to be able to to put it in context or to describe but is a change that take place so that is the word subtle in another meaning says making use of clever or indirect methods to achieve something so here that is the meaning of the word subtle so the bible said that the serpent was the most subtle of all the beasts that god created and then he appeared into in the garden where adam and eve where you know where that the garden that god has given to adam and eve you know the garden of eden and here is a typical conversation conversation that would have taken place so the serpent is not the snake like you think comes in and say hey hey eve what's up you know what about your husband so well that one is busy doing his stuff over there tilling the ground maybe somewhere over there you know he's, he's always a busy person and uh and so the conversation starts. Now let me point it out here that you know it doesn't look to me like the serpent was a stranger in the garden, <laughs> because if it was a stranger, Eve would naturally have been curious. You know, you know, if you have a stranger come in and begin to question you, you will or begin to initiate a conversation. You'll be cautious not to give some details. And so, but this. Uh, the, it sounds to me like the serpent was a part, you know, he's not, he's not a stranger to Eve, but he comes on this very good day and he says to Eve, hello, how are you today? What a beautiful day that the Lord has given to us. Woo, how are you guys doing? What about your husband? 
And it was uh, my husband is some day doing some stuff over there, and he said, "Well, what? Well, you, know, well, you know, I've been thinking. Did God say anything after He gave you guys all this beautiful garden with the rivers running with gold and all this precious stone? Did He say anything?" And 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 if so, well, you know, nothing much. He, he didn't say quite, you know, he just made one or two sentences and you know, and he said that well we should not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the middle of the garden, because if we eat it we will die. And the serpent said, I know that, I know he will do something like that. But let me tell you, you know, God knows that the day that you eat that fruit, you will be like God's life. But the Bible says that man was created in the image and likeness of God. Now we're talking about subtlety here. So you will be like God knowing good and evil. So it looks like God was concealing something that we, you know, that Adam and Eve should have from them. That's what the enemy is trying to sell to them there. That well, you know what, you know, God knows that the day you eat it, you will be like him in the knowing good and evil. And the Bible says that's all what he said. And the conversation would have ended naturally. He said, well, you know what? Uh, we are not really interested because we, we got all this stuff together. We, we are good. We are good. Thank you so much for the information, but we are good. And the Bible says days and days after, the Eve saw that the fruit you know, become attractive to be desired. Remember, we use the word attractive when we talk about seduce. It becomes attractive so much to be desired. And the Bible says he took up the fruit and ate it. He ate the fruit and gave it to the husband. That's the first activity, recorded activity of the seducing spirit. Now, we have, a point I'm emphasizing here is that the seducing spirit attacks our faith. And our faith as believers, uh, you know, is made up of the word of God. The, the Bible said faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So your faith system, the content of your faith system is the word of God. So indirectly or directly, the seducing spirits attacks the word of God. It attacks the word of God. That's what seducing. It attacks what God has said in his word and makes you do, you know, not see, see seducing spirit may not stop you from going to church. It may not stop you from doing some of those things that you like to do. You know, seducing spirit will just gradually enter into your faith system like a virus, like the coronavirus. It will enter into your into your breathing system and you know will will evil your heart and eventually will kill. That's what they say coronavirus is doing. So now this seducing spirit comes like the coronavirus. It enters unknowing. You're just breathing the air thinking that is the normal air. You will not even know. There is no smell. There is no, there is nothing to detect it. And that's why they say we should cover our nose and mouth because, you know, we don't know. Even some folks that are carriers, they may not even know that they are carriers because it may, it may not yet affect their immune, immune system to be able to get them into the hospital. But they are carriers. That, that is what they the scientists are battling in this real time. You know, in the, that's why the social distancing comes in. So the seducing spirit comes in and begin to eat. It infiltrate, you know, your belief system gradually unnoticed. Your belief system it erodes. You, it eats up your belief system and your views begin to change because the Bible says that Eve begin to see that that fruit that he had been seeing all along was so attractive now just after the enemy has spoken the word because he's been infected by seducing spirit. Just then after that he began to see that this fruit is a fruit to be desired. Uh, uh, you know, and then let's look what this is. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant, <laughs> it was not good for food. Before that time, what happened? He believed what she believed what God said. She believed what God said, and she did not take of that fruit. It didn't have any sense. It was not attractive. It was not something to be desired. But after being in by seducing spirit, 
And the Bible says in verses, and when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, when was it good for food? And that it was pleasant to the eyes. I've been seeing it every day, but I never, it is like it, it wasn't important. Man is highlighted. And that, and to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise. Something that, so there was a desire to begin to think of it making her wise. And then she took of it. Hallelujah. So this is the first time that the enemy deploys, you know, the, 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 the arsenal of seducing spirit. Now, now it, it is important that I emphasize here, it's important that I emphasize here, that at this point in time, man was still in the glorious form. He was still in the complete image and likeness of God. At this point in time, God used to come and fellowship with man. Hallelujah. And there, there was no barrier. So the Bible says in the cool of the evening, God will come. And then, you know, to have fellowship to, with Adam and Eve. And then they would talk. I don't know what about it. But he used to come to them. Hallelujah. And then after they have eaten the food, the Bible says when God comes, man was not there. They have to go and hide. I don't want to go into detail. But I just want to pinpoint that if the seducing spirit was able to attack man at that point in time, in his purest state, at that point in time, in the most glorious state of man, and bring man down, it is possible today that you can be attacked by the same spirit and, and, and it has the capacity and the capability to bring you down in your faith because the activity is not confronting confrontational it's not, it's not coming like you expect it is you know subtle it is it is something that you don't notice it is so precise difficult to analyze you cannot even notice it that it's been is it, there but it's eating up that's seducing spirit it attacks our faith now, another point I want to uh, emphasize on this subject is that seducing spirit is also called familiar spirit. It's also called familiar spirit, which means that they are similar to the original, very difficult to distinguish from the real spirit of God. That's a good point. They are similar. They call it familiar spirit. It's very difficult for you to be able to distinct it from the original. You know, that's familiar. That's why the Bible call it familiar spirit. Notice it. Now look at it. Let's get to the book of Acts chapter number 16. If you read from verse 16 to verse 23, you will get the story there. The Bible says, Paul and Simon, as they get into this city, and as they step into this city, the Bible says that, you know, there was a damsel, a young girl about 12 years old. Can we just get into the Bible? I like, I like reading the word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Acts chapter number 16. Now, turn with your Bibles with me. Let's, let's get there to verse 16. Verse 16 is not, it's, it, we, we, we are in the morning devotion of reading the word of God. Hallelujah. And Acts 16, 16, and it came to pass as we went, to prayer, a certain damsel possessed with the spirit of divination met us. Another you know, version said, with familiar spirit met us, which brought her masters much gain by suit saying, and the same followed Paul and Silas and cried saying, these men are the servants of the most high God, which show unto us the way of salvation. And verse 18, and this did she many days. And but Paul, being grieved, turned and said to the Spirit, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out the same hour. And when uh, when her masters saw that the hope of their gains was gone, they caught Paul. And Silas and drew them unto the marketplace to the rulers, uh, and they brought them unto the magistrates. And these men, being Jews, do exceedingly trouble our city. And, 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 and let me stop there. Let me stop there. Let me stop there. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. The Bible says here that this, this is, this is it. This is interesting. The, it's called familiar spirit. It's called the spirit of divination. Hmm. 
because that's what the enemy is using today the spirit of divination that's what is familiar spirit is so familiar with the original that is difficult you know to to for you to differentiate which one is real <laughs> but you know it's not real but it looks so real uh, it's a counterfeit but it looks so real it seems to carry all the marks it's like a currency you, you put it under the can't you know counterfeit detector it's difficult to detect some counterfeits are being produced that are so difficult to detect from the original except some experts will put have the way to detect it so now the bible says here Paul and Silas, when they entered into the city, they had this girl that had a familiar spirit. And the Bible said, this girl followed them for many days. And this is Paul who wrote two texts of the New Testament. This is Paul the Apostle who the light shined from heaven in his calling. And God said, Jesus spoke directly and said, I have met you a you know, apostle to the Gentiles. Oh, you know, Paul is, is an anointed, anointed servant of God. You know, God used him mightily. But at this instant, you know, the familiar spirit seems to have gotten hold of Paul. It took many days. I don't know what the Bible said many days. But the Bible said this girl who was possessed by this, you know, familiar spirit or the spirit of divination or seducing spirit, you know, followed Paul for many days, giving Paul and, and Silas unusual publicity, unpaid advertisement for many days. And you know, and he, what, what was she saying? He was saying, these are the servants of God who show unto us the way of salvation. Was it true or false? It was true. <laughs> it was true. Was it from God? No. So it took Paul, you know, many days, the Bible says, it took Paul many days to discern that this unpaid publicity, this, you know, advertisement that we are getting from this girl is not from God. And the Bible says when he rebuked that spirit, you know, out, it landed them in prison. They got beaten up. Now, that's, that is something worth noticing because when you succeed to notice the activity of seducing spirit, either in the church or, you know, among your friends, you know, you know wherever you're in your business and you try to deal with it, you always get, it always backfire. They always become violent. There's always a threat. There's always something that it looks like it's going to collapse everything around you. This is what actually happened. Paul and Silas got beaten and were thrown into prison. Hallelujah. They were thrown into prison because of this young girl. And, and I, I, I feel it. I feel it for them. The, the seducing spirit was spreading lies. Jesus talked about the activity of seducing spirit. When he talked about the leaven of the Pharisees, he said the little leaven, leaven of the whole, the little yeast, he said in the seducing spirit or the familiar spirit or the spirit of divination, you know, is like a yeast. You just need to put a little bit in the dough. And when you put it, it makes it sweet. Well, it takes over. So the, you know, like I said, the seducing spirit just need, you know, one percent lie to add to your ninety-nine percent truth, and then with a period of time, it will collapse. It will, you know, it will, it will penetrate and overtake the whole truth. Just one percent. Seducing spirits attack your belief system through minor infiltration of falsehoods, falsehood or lies. 1% of lies or falsehood is enough. It doesn't need, you know, 50%. It doesn't, just 1%. Just 1% to add 1%. It makes you believe something, 99% you know, percent of the Bible and 1% lie of the enemy. And within a period of time, all of that will become lies. It will take you from the faith. Hallelujah. And that is why Paul was warning 
uh, Timothy said, you know, and the Spirit of the Lord speaks expressly that in the latter times, some shall depart. Depart. They will move gradually from the faith. Uh, and we are seeing that today. We are seeing the activity of seducing spirit today. It's happening real time in life. Some of the things that are happening today are the things that we will not believe 20 years, 30 years ago, 40 years, 50 years ago will be happening. You, know, and, 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 you, you may not like this. You may not, but you see that the, <laughs> the truth is so, is so real. You know, so the, the, let, let me just bring a common example that is, is reading today. Today, today, today. Today there is, oh Lord help me. I, I don't, don't crucify me for this, but this is the truth. I can't help it. Today, there is legalization of homosexuality. <laughs> man and man to man and woman to man. And then on the TV, and they're getting married. And, and they say, now, uh, now, now can, can you understand that? Can you, how did it happen that a man would begin to have an affection towards another man? <laughs> and they begin to, until, you know, they, they get married, and now it is legalized. And uh, <laughs> even in the church, Oh Lord have mercy. <laughs> Even in the church, the same thing that God destroys Sodom and Gomorrah. I remember the story. The same thing that God destroys Sodom and Gomorrah. And, and the Bible says there that even the men, when they saw the angels, so the angels were in the form of men, they came, oh Lord have mercy. They came to to, to you know to Lord's house and say and Lord hide the angels and they said you know no no and Lord the Bible said Lord had three daughters who were virgins and 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 he brought and said hey guys please please these folks are you know strangers you know and, and, and we don't just respect them you know what take my three daughters just do it they say oh, forget about your daughter we want the man we want those men that those three men that entered into your house that we want. It's all said, but take I mean Lord said, but take but they said we don't want it. How did it happen? It's the same thing that made God destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. You know, men on men doing things that are on that are unheard of. How did it happen? It is because of the activity of seducing spirit, making you changing. You know, when you when you when we get back to let's just get back, let me show you that in the Bible. And then when Paul was warning Timothy, uh, you may not like this. I know you may not like this, but this is the truth. He says in verse 3, I used to say that verse 3 is not yet happening. He said in 1 Timothy chapter 4 verse 3, forbidding to marry and commanding, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from, forbidding to marry, stopping people from getting married. Uh, so how do you have to? Now the, the family, the institution as ordained by God was supposed to be marriage between man and woman. You know, he's been forbidden, he's been changed, he's been corrupted. Now it is women and women and men and men that are getting married. And it's legalized, approved by government of nations. In many nations, it's, you know, it's legalized. How did it happen? What happened? What happened? What happened? It is the a result of the activity of seducing spirit. Men, the what they normally will believe, the normal truth, the truth that is easily acceptable, the truth that God has established that the marriage, true marriage is between man and woman has been you know, taken gradually before in many nations used to be something that is done on the ground. But today, they will even march and carry black ash. I know you may not like this, but I'm trying to let you understand that that's how, how far seducing spirit can go. They start gently on notice and then when the effects when it, it has it, it eaten up your belief system, the things that you used to believe, it will change completely. And it's happening today, in, even in the churches. It's happening today. It's happening today. And so now what I'm trying to say that as you are going out, the enemy is going to deploy this seducing spirit to make you believe, to make you change. Well, God said that, but he did not actually mean that. 
you know, a, a lot of folks who will tell you about, you know, God's, in, you know, the talk about tithes, but you know, it's not in today. They will dispute and they will argue and they will try to bring scriptures to support some unbiblical doctrines that they are, you know, you know, propagating, you know, because of the activity. How did they get it there? Some will start right and end it in the wrong way. Why? Because of the activity of seducing spirit. Seducing spirit, you know, and say a familiar spirit, which means they are similar to the original, very difficult to distinguish from the real spirit of God. So you see there, like in the book of Acts, that girl was saying exactly what sounds true, but it was not from God. And there are many today who are saying things in the name of the Lord, but it's not from God. It's true, but it's not from God. They can prophesy. Can I prophesy? And they will say it and they will reveal something that is true but is not from the Spirit of God. That's where we need the gift of the discerning of the Spirit. Ability to discern. Ability to know the source of you know, the Spirit that is operating within the person or the personality that is using. We need to know it. We need to be able to discern that this is the Spirit of God or it's not the Spirit of God. So this is Spirit operates among believers, you know, fellowship with, with them, speaks in tongues, shout hallelujah and praise aloud. That's, that's, that's how, what they can do. He comes into the believers' fellowship, praise. He acts exactly the same. It's difficult to discern. It's difficult to discern. If it took Paul, the anointed word, many days to discern the activity of the seducing spirit, because what that girl was saying was true. It looks like it was supporting the ministry. It looks like it was supporting the missionary work that Paul and Silas were involved. Now, I can imagine myself stepping out there in an unknown place and somebody walk up and say, you are a man of God. <laughs> you know the, how that feels? You know that feeling? <laughs> you are an anointed man of God. You know how that feels? If you don't have the Spirit of God within you, you will be puffed up. Yes, you know, I just, you know, arrived the city. I tell you, my anointing is speaking out so loud. Eh? You know, and they just see me and I recognize that I'm and servant of God. That could be a, a seducing spirit who's trying to partner with you. And you know what? If somebody comes and says that and, and then they say, you know what, please, I, I love to I love to work with you, you know, because the Lord has revealed me to you. What will you do? You will easily yield. I think this is what Paul was going through at this point in time. For many days, this girl followed, become a part of Paul's ministry. But we need that grace, Hakkabu. We need the grace that was upon Paul, that even after many days, he was still able to discern and deal with that spirit, that seducing spirit, and deal with that familiar spirit, and deal with that spirit that was trying to, you know, partner with them in the work of the Lord. Many have partners who are seducing spirit, who are easily, you know, easily, you know, subtly, subtly infiltrating their ministry. Infi no, 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 don't get me wrong. I love partners, you know. I always have a care for partners, but we need to discern when one comes as a familiar spirit. Hallelujah. Now, now, my point number four, seducing spirit prophesy reveals or breaks the gifts of the word of knowledge and the word of wisdom, which is so prevalent today. Today, people are, you know, I hear, can I prophesy? I've been, I've, I've traveled the world globally. I've seen, you know, activities, you know. There was one time I, I, I was in France. I was in France and, you know, and my good friend, uh, my bishop that was in France, so we went to this conference and, you know, he said, uh, and when I stepped in there, I was with uh, uh, Susie Lantab from Australia, uh, and then we, we were having a conference in, 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 in Paris, and then after that, we, we were invited to this, you know, conference. And, uh, you know, when I walk in there and even had my friend, uh, my minister friend from the United States, in, United States flee in for, for that conference. And he was invited by the servant of the Lord to minister. And I had to go because, you know, this, uh, this uh, pastor friend of mine who came from the States, you know, came to, to our conference, but he was invited. So we had to go. And once I step in there, 
I told my bishop friend, Bishop Philip Cote, I said, this is not the spirit of God. What is going on here is not the spirit of God. I was restless. I was restless. You know, and, and, and I tell them, I said, let us get out of this place as soon as possible. This is not God here. And while the meeting took so long, we had to go outside and breathe and come back in. Because what was happening, I knew is not the spirit of God. And I tried, I talked to many of them, and then we eventually left, and then we were invited by this man of God into his place. And you know what? You know, there were pictures this man has spoken to, has been invited by the French president, has met the French ministers. You know, he was such an important, and he was living in, you know, one of the most bourgeois areas of Paris, expensive, you know, and, but you know, one thing I look at, when I was there, I said, where is his wife? They say he's have no wife, and they were these ladies that were serving. And and when I got there, I couldn't even eat. And they said, "You want to eat?" I said, "No, I don't want." Other people were ministers were eating and enjoying, and they were showing album of where his ministry is, speaking to the president of France, you know, prophesying, praying for them. It looks like his ministry has gone. And the following year, to capital, he brought Benihim from the United States into Paris. And, you know, it was explosive. And, you know, Benny Hinn, you know, put his, you know, his suit on him and called him a son. And, and I was, you know, I, that season I was back in France the next year when this was happening. And they said, Benny Hinn is coming. I love Benny Hinn. I know him as a man of God. I appreciate him. But, you know, where he was going, I said, oh, you know, and Pastor Benny does not know what is going on there. You know, it looks on the outside because, you know, you know, but you know what? To cut the long story short, this is, the, ask anybody, I can make references, you know, you know, as I'm making reference, you can call it. The following day, everything collapsed after Benny was gone. I think that the anointing that Benny came in and put the mantle exposed. He was exposed of his witchcraft and all of that he was doing in the past. And he ran away from France. I think he ran to the United States. What am I saying? For that period of three years that I know, I knew this young man. He was so powerful, speaking to the authority, the presidents of France, the ministers were listening to him. He brought in a renowned man of God who put his clothes and his suit on him and called him like a mantle and said, this is my son. That's, you know. And you know that if, if Betty Hill were to come and to declare you, and but he doesn't know, I think that anointing, <laughs> that which he did is one that exposed and he, the whole ministry collapsed, and he ran away. And every, you know, the young girls began to confess of sexual intercourses and all of that that was happening. People that died, you know, you know, all kind of terrible things. What am I saying? Seducing spirit, because he was operating in this gift of the knowledge and word of wisdom and prophesying. But when I got there, my spirit says, it's not because I'm too much, but my spirit did not agree with what I was saying. I said, this is not God. So that is a typical example of seducing spirit. Seducing spirits attack the word of God and your obedience, and your obedience to the word of God. When you are when you are contemplating whether to obey a particular word from the law, especially the logos that is clearly written, and you begin to have conflict with it, there is there in that at that point in time, there is a seducing spirit that is beginning to say to you, no, this is not applicable to them. They, you know, like, you know, let me use a popular one. Tithe is not the thing of the Old Testament. It's not in the New Testament. And that, 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 that. There will be things like that. There will be, when you begin to have conflict with that, when you begin, that, that means, because the Bible clearly said, bring you the ties into the storehouse. That, you know, it, it, it said, test me, prove me. The first time God will say, I want you to test, let's, let, put me to test, put me to test on this one. Because he knew that once you are able to do that, you know, we said the window of heaven, not heaven, the window of heaven will open. And God will pour, and there is so many that is attacked. But He said, "You are cursed with a curse." So some folks will rather, you know, continue being under the curse by God than obey the Scriptures, because of one thing: a hundred, and you give ten out. 
because of a hundred. And you, God said, I give you a hundred, ten percent is my own. And he said, no, 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 that's too much, that's too much. No, I can't. Why do you argue with that? If somebody gives you, you know, you he gives you a hundred dollar and just ask for ten. The, this is a hundred, take this hundred dollar, but give me ten back. And you argue with that? Is that too much? Hallelujah. <laughs> when you have, you're going to have conflict with obeying the word of God, it indicates rightly that there is an activity of the seducing spirit. I said that, you know, I've talked about Genesis chapter number two. So these are, you know, you know when you begin to when you begin to have conflict you know obeying the word of god will you be like you know okay you know i, I was born you were not born. if you have your pennies you were not born you know you were not born a woman you, that, that that's the deception of the enemy that's the deception of the enemy the enemy is this you have been seduced you know, paul will say you know to galatians you have been bewitched you be, be this bewitchment is not you know using spell but it's gradual you know your mind the what you believe system has been gradually changed by the activity of seducing spirit and that's why my emphasis this morning to you is that you know as you are about to get down there beware because the things you pray and you believe in may be attacked at the outside and you would change you know sometimes when you, the enemy will put people in your life who will say things that will discourage you you know from the things that you have received from god they will say things that will discourage you and say it's not possible it's not visible and then eventually you begin to see it differently from the way god has given to you from the way it was the seduces spirit attack your belief system and paul said that you know this spirit he speaks explain and many will depart from the faith the things that you what is it that you believed when the year started what was your dream what was your faith based on when the year started do you still believe it after this you know period of you know uh, difficulty imposed by the corona pandemic are you still able to believe that this year is the year that god said this to you that god is still able to do has this situation seduced you has this situation eaten up your faith has this situation and circumstances around you influenced you so much that your belief system begin to change and you begin to say something is already half of the year i think that this year is so wasted this year is is gone i can you know, nothing can be done because of the state of the economy because of the you know what is going on everything now i came to talk to somebody this moment that seducing spirit you know attack your faith system you need to stand on your faith you need to believe continue to believe god last time we talked about the prayer of faith is living out you know what you have prayed you need to this is a when the seducing spirit comes you need to live out your prayer you need to act i know you may put on the armor of the prayer of faith you know living out your prayer living contrary to what you know people say and living according to what the word of god says this is the only way you can overcome the activities of you know seducing spirit by holding on to your faith looking on to jesus christ the author and the finisher of your faith not looking to the situation not looking to the circumstances not looking to anything else but onto jesus christ the author and the finisher of our faith of your faith now i'm going to read this last scripture I just want to pinpoint to you how the you know the activity of seducing spirit can you know can manifest. Open your Bibles with me lastly to the book of First Kings chapter number 13. First Kings chapter number 13. Uh, let me just I'm gonna be reading you know few few chapters there just to pinpoint. Remember, I'm reading from the King James version of the scripture, and then I'll be closing with this scripture this morning. Look at verse 1. And the behold, there came a man of God out of Judah by the word of God. I want you to underline the phrase that says, by the word of God. Unto Bethel. And Jeroboam stood by the altar to burn incense. Look at verse 2. And he cried against the altar in the word of the Lord. I want you to underline the phrase that says, in the word of the Lord. 
and said, O altar, let me skip that. And gave a sign. Let me skip that. Look at verse 4. And it came to pass when King Jeroboam heard the saying of the man of God, which had cried against the altar in Bethel, that he put forth his hand from the altar, saying, Lay hold on him. And his hand, which he put forth against him, dried up so that he could not pull it in again to him. Verse 5. And the altar was also rent, and the ashes poured out from the altar according to the sign which the man of God had given by the word of the Lord. And the king said, answered and said unto the man of God, Entreat now the face of the Lord thy God, and pray for me that my hand be restored me again. And the man of God besought the Lord, and the king's hand was restored him again. And it became as it was before. In verse number 7, And the king said unto the man of God, Come home with me and refresh thyself, and I will give thee a reward. Look at verse 8. And the man of God said unto the king, If thou wilt give me half thy house, I will not go in with thee, neither will I eat bread nor drink water in this place. Why? Look at verse 9. For it was charged me by the word of the Lord, underline that saying, Eat no bread nor drink water nor turn again by the way the same way that thou comest. So he went another way, and, uh, and then he refused this offer. Now look at verse 11. And now there dwelt an old prophet in Bethel, and his sons came and told him all the works that the man of God had done that day in Bethel. The words which he had spoken unto the king, they told him also to their father. And their father said unto them, What way went he? For his sons had seen what way the man of God went, which came from Judah. <clears throat> Excuse me. And he said unto his son, Saddle me the ass, and they saddled him the ass. And he wrote thereon, 14. And he went after the man of God, and found him sitting under an oak, and said unto him, Art thou the man of God that comes from Judah? And he said, I am. 15. And he said unto him, Come home with me and eat bread. And he said, I may not return with thee, nor go with thee. Neither will I eat bread nor drink water with thee in this place. For it was said unto me by the word of the Lord, Thou shalt eat no bread nor drink water there, nor turn again to go by the way. No, 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 no. Let me, let me pause in here. I want you to look at the two set of responses given by this man of God. The first time when he, you know, when the king hands was healed, the king said, "Please come and have lunch with me." And he said, "I was charged, I was instructed, I was commanded. That is, that is the word they charge. I was instructed and I was commanded that I should not eat in this place, I should not drink in this place, I should not go the same way I came, you know, into this place." And, you know, the king just left him. But look at here. The Bible says he went and he sat under an oak tree. Hallelujah. You know, he, sitting on an, under an oak tree is a sense of accomplishment. You know, when you begin to feel that, you know, God is mightily using you, when you begin to feel that you're so important, when you begin to feel that, you know, when you become popular and renowned, there is a tendency that the enemy will send to you as a, a seducing spirit because then you are sitting under an oak tree and the Bible said, look at the response. When the, when the false, when the old prophet came, he said, are you the man of God? He said, yes. I am. <laughs> I am the anointed one. Oh, you heard about my ministry. <laughs> even the king, <laughs> even the king, you know, no, no, the, the king hand was healed by me. <laughs> you know, you know, you know that. The, the king couldn't even stand my ministry, he even offered me. Are you the man of God? He said, I am. And what came out? And the, the old prophet said, Come with me. But look at the look at how the word changed. Look at he was not I was charged again. And look at how he said in verse 15. And he said unto him, Come home with me and eat bread. Look at verse his response in verse 16. And he said, I may <laughs> I may not return. I may not return nor go with you. And I because uh, you know what? I I, I was I was uh, 
Now, it, it was said to me, in, in, not I was charged, it, it was said, in, and, and they told me by the word of God that I shouldn't do it. Not I was, it was no longer direct speech. I was charged. It was now, you know, indirect speech. I was told, you know, I was told by the word of God. I was in, told by the word of God. It was not that he heard it now, it was I was told. And you know, the end of that man, he went back and he ate and he disobeyed God. Now, that is a typical example when you are under the influence of the activity of seducing spirit. You, you do not stand, you know, right in, in line with the word of God. You, you know, that you will say, that's what our church believes. That's what the pastor says. That's what the Bible says. It's not what you believe again. That's what they say. You know, many people believe that. You know, our church does this. You know, and it's no longer you, you, you the word of God is no, you no longer own it when you're on that. But before he said, I was charged by the word of God. Now it is like, uh, yeah, you know, I was, you know, I was charged. You know, uh, I, they say, I may, I may, I may. You know, so I have a choice, you know, if, if I want to, I can't come, you know. But before, there was no alternative. When you begin to have alternative to the word of God, to the instruction that God has given to you, you are under the influence of seducing spirit. Seducing spirit are the greatest weapons in the satanic arsenal. He's able to bring any believers down. Paul said, let him that thinks that he stands take heed, lest he fall. There is nobody that is strong. There is nobody that is all what you may be. You don't have to sit there. Having done all, Paul admonished, just keep standing. There is no sitting down. There is no place of, I have done too much. I have accomplished. I you know this, that. No. Just stand. Keep on doing what God has asked you to do. This morning, this week, I want to pray with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Whatever is the activity of seducing spirit that the enemy has launched against you, either through circumstances through sickness in the body that will make you begin to doubt the infallibility of the word of God. <laughs> whatever the enemy is doing now to begin to make you, whatever circumstances is using to begin to make you doubt the authenticity of the word of God, the reality of the power of God, and the work of redemption through Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary. I rebuke it right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, bow your head, Lee Prodos, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we come by your power in the name of Jesus. Lord, we come against every activity of seducing spirit in the life of everyone under the sound of of my voice and everyone who will listen to this recording whatever is the activity that the enemy is using against them situation and circumstances to make them deviate from the the beliefs the, from the word of god from believing that the word of god is true to begin to make them to think that god love is no longer there for them to begin to make them think that you know God is not interested in their situation. To begin to think that God does not answer prayer. To begin to think that God is God is no longer in the affairs of men. Whatever is the activity of you know seducing spirit, the, the, the weaponry of the enemy that has been launched against anyone through sickness in the body, through financial situation, through marital circumstances that will make them to begin to question the infallibility of the word of God, to begin to question the truth of the word of God. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I take authority over those situations. I take authority over those circumstances. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command those situations to be uprooted in the name of Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus. For the Bible says that the blood of Jesus Christ speaks better things than the blood of the righteous. Let the blood of Jesus Christ speak on behalf of every man. Speak on behalf of every woman. Under the sound of my voice this hour, in the name of Jesus Christ, let every activity of seducing spirit be terminated in the name of Jesus Christ. And let their effect 
in, and their faith be nullified by the power in the name of Jesus Christ. I release you from sickness. I release you from financial crisis. I release you from marital crisis. I release you from economic crisis. Whatever you are going through right now, I ask that the blood of Jesus Christ, the power that is in the blood of Jesus Christ, the efficacy of the power in the blood of Jesus Christ will speak on your behalf in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, this morning, I give you praise and honor and adoration. Father, Lord, I pray that you will help your children to stand upon the word of God. To stand upon the word of God, no matter what happens. For your word says that the thoughts that you think towards us are good and not of evil. To give us that expected end. And your word declares that the expectation of the righteous shall not be cut off. Father, I ask that the Lord there will be a supernatural strength released upon your children of God to stand their ground in these seemingly most difficult times that they will stand their ground. They will stand upon the world and they will trust you. you know, because the Bible says when we trust you, we will be like man Zion that cannot be removed. Father, Lord, help your children of God. Let grace be poured out to help us stand in these end times against seducing spirits. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, mighty Father. I bless your children this morning. I ask that your name be glorified in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hope you enjoyed this episode of our morning devotion. And once again, we want to apologize. We started a little bit late because of uh, the technical glitches that we have. But, you know, it is well. And, we you know, God has been faithful to us. And we really thank God, you know. Uh, there are some important announcements that is going to come on the screen right now. And for prayers and counseling, our number is there. Call, text, what's up? The number is right on the screen there. And many of you have asked how you can support our missionary work here in Europe. The information will be displayed. We are missionaries under uh, the Nakas and Kingdom Ministries, you know, position in Europe. Hallelujah. And the information is going to be declared there, you know, you know, so that you can have a way to support us through our headquarters church in Houston, Texas. Hallelujah. Once again, thank you so much for being a part of this, uh, this broadcast. We give glory to God and we magnify his holy name. Thank you for being a part of this, you know, fellowship. The Lord bless you and the Lord keep you. The Bible study comes up with Apostle this afternoon. The world is full of people who are hurting. Many live their lives in fear, shame, loneliness, depression, and the list goes on and on. What if I told you that you could help change the lives of hurting people? Would you do it? Most people really desire to make an impact in the lives of others around the world. They just don't have a context that supports their desire. Well, Dana Carson Kingdom Ministries invites you to do what you've always wanted to do. Help change lives around the world. What exactly is Dana Carson Kingdom Ministries doing to change lives? The Bible says in Matthew 24, 14, And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations, and then the end will come. Dana Carson Kingdom Ministries is taking the good news of the gospel of the kingdom around the world through television, radio, and the Kingdom Reformation Crusades, and people's lives are being changed. How can you help change lives? When you sow a monthly seed of $20 or more, you help share the love of God to the masses. You help send missionaries throughout the world to impact communities for God's kingdom. And most importantly, you help win souls for the kingdom of God. All it takes is your monthly seed of $20 or more, and you can help change the world. To partner with Dana Carson Kingdom Ministries today, simply go online to drdanacarson.com forward slash partners or call 281-824-4190. That's 281-824-4190. You can also mail in your monthly seed to 7401 Gulf Freeway, Houston, Texas 77017. Thank you in advance for partnering with Dana Carson Kingdom Ministries, and we look forward to taking the kingdom to the world with you.